Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. It's time for a compliment video. Today I'm going to be going over just about every designer brand and the fragrance that they make that is the best for pulling compliments from other people, at least in my opinion. There are so many fragrances to go over today, so I'm not going to be holding them up and giving you a big breakdown. We're just going to pretty much run right through these. So let's get started. Okay, let's get things kicked off with Dolce & Gabbana. For me, the best, most consistent compliment pullers from the house are going to be K Eau de Parfum and the One Eau de Parfum. Now, K Eau de Parfum is gonna give you that blue fragrance versatility, basically daytime, nighttime, any season, that kind of fragrance, very easy to pull off, and you're gonna see a lot of blue fragrances in this list. So that one does really well in basically any situation. The One Eau de Parfum, that's gonna be more of a date night fragrance, sweet, sexy, spicy, one of the best evening fragrances period. And yes, I realize there are a bunch of flankers in the the one line that kill it at pulling compliments, but I, I can't include all of those here. Next up, Versace. With Versace, I'm going to go with Eros. Now, for the most part, I'd say the Eau de Toilette is going to be your best bet if you're just looking for compliments and that's it. The Eau de Parfum version of Eros for me is a little bit more versatile, but the Eau de Toilette is a little bit more loud. It has that sweetness that commands attention. It is great for an evening out, especially if you're going to a club or something like that. And uh, also surprisingly, a decent fragrance in the office. Just don't wear it too heavily there. Next up, Christian Dior from Dior. Sauvage, yeah, Sauvage, the Eau de Toilette, once again, the EDT winning out. Now that one is, is really strong, it projects, it lasts, it's got this metallic feeling to it as pepper, as bergamot, it's super versatile, and uh, really that one has gotten me just crazy amounts of compliments over the years. I would say also Dior Homme 2020 is really good for compliments, but if we're just going, you know, the tops, the best of the best, Probably Sauvage. Up next, we're gonna do Carolina Herrera. And with Herrera, kind of split between Bad Boy, the Eau de Toilette, the original, and 212 VIP. Now I'd say for most people nowadays, probably Bad Boy would win out. Uh, it's, it's maybe not the most original thing ever, but it's warm, it's sweet, easy to pull off, especially in cooler weather. 212 VIP, uh, a little bit louder and uh, has you know, a uh, slightly more of a throwback feel to it than Bad Boy does. But both of those fragrances work really well, at least just as far as pulling attention goes. Now we're gonna do Victor and Rolf, uh, Spice Palm Extreme. Yeah, I'd say Spice Palm Extreme. Really great performance, lasts forever, cuts right through the cold, obviously lots of spices. It's got this great black vanilla note to it that kind of smooths things out a little bit. And uh, I think it's the best of the Spice Palm line still to this date. Also, maybe give some consideration to uh, Spice Palm Infrared and uh, Night Vision Eau de Parfum if you're just looking for straight up compliments. But I'd say the place to start is Extreme. Chanel up next. Yeah, one of the big boys. Uh, Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. That'd be the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, a little bit different from Dior. You know, with Sauvage, you go Eau de Toilette. Blue de Chanel, probably Eau de Parfum. And also Allure Homme Sport. Now I know Allure Homme Sport is not the sexiest pick. You know, it's got some similarities to Versace Pour Homme, but if you're looking for a fragrance that you can wear in high heat situations that still has this kind of creamy, sexy sweetness that's gonna pull a lot of attention, that one will do it for you. Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum, you're basically one of those blue fragrances. Anytime, anywhere, any place, any age, doesn't matter, it's gonna work. Gucci, up next, the big Gooch. Uh, for this one, I'd say Gucci Guilty, Eau de Toilette, the original, and Gucci Guilty Black. Now, I know that's not the most uh, exciting choice, not the sexiest choice, because a lot of people will see Gucci Guilty and think, man, that's boring. Thumbs down. I vomit thinking about wearing that. Bleh, bleh, too, too plain. Bleh. But just as far as wearability is concerned and you know the the masses <laughs> what they think about it man gucci guilty and guilty black crush it there's a reason that gucci guilty is still at a lot of stores a top 10 bestseller and frankly when you go outside the the guilty line at least for men 
there, there's not really a whole lot out there as far as Gucci goes with just their, their mainline designer stuff. I really like Gucci by Gucci. I think that fragrance is really nice, but it can't really stack up with Gucci Guilty and Guilty Black, just as far as compliments go. Go with another big one now, Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, for that one, I would say Why Eau de Parfum. Kind of slots right in there with Dior Sauvage and Blue de Chanel. You know, one of those blue fragrances anywhere, anytime, any place, and it's a big one. Why Eau de Parfum just commands attention when you have that on. And also, I give kind of a shout out to La Nuit Alone Blue Electrique, the newest flanker in the La Nuit line. It's got that La Nuit Alone DNA, that backbone that people love, only modernized and given a slight blue twist. Both of those great choices. Now on to Prada. Yeah, so this one, you know, a little bit, a little bit hard. You know, you would think maybe Prada Loam Intense, but they, they discontinued it. But really though, the, the easiest choice is, is probably the best choice, which is Luna Rosa Carbon. Luna Rosa Carbon, a strong similarity to Dior Sauvage. Not a big surprise <laughs> that it does really well at pulling attention. A little bit smoother than Dior Sauvage, but uh, if you smell it and you're familiar with how Sauvage smells, you'll be like, oh yeah, Luna Rosa Carbon, Prada Sauvage. Fantastic though at pulling attention, ultra versatile, really, really nice scent. Up next, we got Armani. Armani, Aqua du Joe. Yeah, just the Aqua du Joe, the original. I know a lot of people are gonna say, man, that's played out. You know, so many people have worn that for so long, including myself, uh, but it still works. You know, it still sells Aqua du Joe, a big time uh, attention grabber, compliment puller, yeah. And if we're including Emporio Armani with Giorgio Armani, stronger with you intensely. That stuff projects like a monster. It lasts forever. It's got that sweetness uh, that is in so many fragrances nowadays, actually stronger with you intensely and stronger with you. You're gonna see uh, the inspiration that that fragrance has had on other lines across lots of other fragrances where they smell a little bit similar to stronger with you. So I'd say go with intensely. If you're just looking for attention, that's the best one in that line for that. Up next, uh, Hugo Boss. Now, Hugo Boss probably would have said Boss Bottled Intense, but they have uh, apparently killed that off. So can't really recommend that now. For me personally, one of the best ones is the Scent Private Accord. That has always worked really well for me. It's got kind of an interesting scent profile with the Meninka in there. It gives it this kind of dusty, exotic fruitiness. Uh, it's also got coffee, cacao, really well done, great fall time fragrance. So I'd go the Scent Private Accord. And it's not that they don't have a lot of fragrances, you know, Hugo Boss, they do. It's just a lot of them end up smelling nondescript. So you smell it and you're like, yeah, it's not bad, but it's not really something that sticks with you. And if you're looking for, you know, compliments, looking for attention, you probably do want something that's at least gonna be memorable. Now we'll move on to Isi Miyake. And from that house, I've gotta go low DC. Yeah, just the original kind of same or similar thought process behind picking Aqua du Joe. For Giorgio Armani, it just still works. And if you look at you know, Macy's, Sephora, places like this that carry fragrances at retail, uh, Low DC is still the one to own for Isi Miyake. It's the best seller. And in some stores, it's the only one that they carry. Up next, Roberto Cavalli. Cavalli, admittedly, not that many fragrances to pick from. And uh, they're apparently just killing off a lot of them. I would have picked Lenote. That one, man, positive attention and cool weather, that will do it for you. That is a sexy date night fragrance that just got guillotined. <laughs> you know, Cavalli just, <laughs> yeah, thanks for that one. As far as ones that you can still find pretty easily, probably go Silver Essence, Womo Silver Essence. That one, great versatility, sweetness, enough complexity to make it interesting if you've smelled a lot of fragrances before. Doesn't cost all that much. Packaging is great. Silver essence. Now we're on to Paco, Paco Rabanne. Now this one is uh, a little bit difficult because there are a lot of fragrances that have done well for me over the years with Paco Rabanne. You know, I thought about throwing in 1 million um, or, or one of the flankers, but I ended up going with Invictus Aqua and Pure Excess Night. So two. Invictus Aqua, for me anyway, is one of the most wearable Invictus fragrances that still has that Invictus DNA front and center. And people do love that DNA. I mean, that stuff works. There's a reason Invictus is so popular and why so many fragrances knock it off. And then Pure Excess Night, it's a bit stronger 
than the original Pure Excess. So you're gonna get a little more oomph, a little more push out of it. It's maybe not quite as divisive. I, I, I wouldn't say Pure Excess is divisive, so maybe I take that back a little bit, but it's, uh, it's more easily worn, we'll say. Great nighttime fragrance, great cool weather fragrance, uh, great performance. There's a lot to love about Pure Excess Night. On to Bulgari, and uh, you know here, I was thinking maybe Aqua Amara, that one does really well. Uh, actually, a couple different aqua fragrances could have made it, but I want to go Man in Black. Man in Black has always crushed it for me. It's got a similarity to Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf, though it's usually a little bit more affordable from discounters than Spice Bomb is. Also works in this boozy rum note, so it's just a perfect fragrance when it's cold outside and a big time compliment puller, especially in like date type situations. On to Azaro, and uh, this was kind of a toss up. Uh, but I'm gonna go the most wanted. Yeah, the newest in the wanted line. Now, I personally like Wanted by Night more, but for most people, you know, just a casual guy looking, a casual guy, like what is that? Hey man, I'm just a casual guy. A guy that's casually into fragrances. If he's just looking for something that's gonna get home noticed in a positive way, the most wanted probably is gonna be a safer, better bet than Wanted by Night, even though I like Wanted by Night more. So in the most wanted, you're gonna see that kind of inspiration taken from Stronger With You. I talked about that earlier and it, it works perfectly. It is the most <laughs> undivisive uh, wintertime fragrance with, with good performance that you could probably find. Man, this, is, this is, takes forever. There's a lot of brands. Jeez. Next up, Givenchy. I'm gonna go Gentleman Eau de Parfum. Gotta work in that iris. I love iris-based fragrances. This one has additional warmth and sweetness from notes like Tonka, Vanilla, Tolu Balsam. It's a wonderful scent. You know, it's somewhat in the same ballpark, kind of. It's a really dumbed down way of putting it, but as fragrances like Valentino Uomo Intense and Jerome Intense. So if you like those, you should like a gentleman note of parfum. I think it's great and you get a lot of bang for your buck. It lasts forever too. On to Varvados and with Varvados, gotta go Artisan Pure. Yeah, just a wonderful spring summertime scent. Very clean, lots of citrus in here. Uh, a little bit smooth, almost like a touch of this creaminess underneath everything else and then uh, woods as it dries. Now we're gonna do Guerlain. Now I know that Guerlain is considered a niche house by a lot of people, uh, but their Lome Ideal line and some of their other more affordable fragrances, they're more designer type. So a lot of the times I'll kind of lump those in with designers. That's what I'm doing here. I'll go Lome Ideal Eau de Parfum. The cherry in there is is commanding. It's resting when people smell it. It's just, like, whew, you know, grabs your attention right away and it smells great through the dry down as well. Lome Ideal Eau de Parfum, that's where I'd go. Mugler, Mugler. Now that sounds a little, a little tricky because they've they've killed off a lot of their better fragrances. Yeah, I'm gonna go Pure Havan, and uh, I know Pure Havan can be difficult to find right now, and the price can be jacked up. But that is one of my my most complimented fragrances ever. It's a, a great pipe tobacco, very sweet, and uh, in cool weather crushes it. Dunhill, um, we're talking just. Uh, the best compliment puller for the most people, Icon Racing. I think the original Icon is a better fragrance than Icon Racing is, but just uh, mass appeal, you know, ease of use, Icon Racing. I'd go that one. It's got a little Invictus to it. So, you know, if you don't like Invictus, maybe you wouldn't like Icon Racing, but I think it's the safest bet. Uh, Cartier up next. Uh, for this one, Declaration d'un soir. Yeah, Declaration d'un soir. One of the best fresh masculine rose fragrances on the market. I think that it smells absolutely amazing, very classy. If you can get your hands on it, that's the one. Now we'll go Hermes. You know, some people would say H24, uh, but I've not had good luck with H24. That one just does not seem to work for me. Um, so I can't recommend that one. I go uh, Terre d'Hermes Autre Fraiche. Autre Fraiche is like, Terre d'Hermes, only freshened up, it cleaned up basically some of that earth kind of washed away with a water note. Still have the citrus in there. You've got woodsy undertones, uh, very classy, easy to pull off in, in just about any situation. Halloween, gotta go Halloween Man X. 
That's the one. Halloween Man X is the pinnacle of that line for me personally. The coffee note in there is fantastic. You've also got whiskey, uh, another really good cool weather fragrance. And a lot of times at discounters, very cheap. So Halloween Man X. Jean Paul Gaultier, um, mm, you know, I'd say Ultra Mall and Le Mall de Parfum. Le Mall de Parfum is a wonderful reinterpretation of the original Le Mall. Uh, it, it smells fantastic, does really, really good at getting positive attention. And of course, Ultra Mall with that, that sweetness, that pear, people have been drawn to that fragrance since it came out. So it still works today. Valentino. <laughs> Go Valentino Womo Intense for me personally. Again, wonderful iris fragrance. Uh, maybe though, Born in Roma Yellow Dream would be the best bet for the most people. And Yellow Dream, the more I've worn it, I mean, the name is stupid. I hate the name, but uh, the more I've worn it, I dislike it less, but it still is not all that original. It's another one of those fragrances that's kind of inspired by Stronger With You. So, you know, take it or leave it. Mont Blanc, Go Explorer and Legend, both. So <laughs> Explorer is Mont Blanc's take on Aventus. Legend is Mont Blanc's take on Fierce from Abercrombie & Fitch. So either one of those, uh, they're both pretty affordable, both good. Up next, Ferragamo. Gonna go Womo, Salvatore Ferragamo Womo. Great tiramisu note. Again, a lot of sweetness, performance is there. Uh, usually, this counter's not that expensive. Really, really solid scent. Love Womo. Calvin Klein, probably CK1 Shock or Eternity Eau de Parfum. So Eternity Eau de Parfum takes Eternity and very slightly tweaks it and tries to make it a little bit more modern, really easy to wear. And uh, CK1 Shock, a little bit louder, sweeter. Um, for a time, people said it had great performance. Now, some people say the performance is not that great, but if that's the case with your bottle, just spray more on. It's really good at commanding attention because of that sweet kind of tobacco feel it has. Tommy Bahama. Now, a lot of Tommy Bahama scents, not very strong. Keep that in mind. Some of these are eau de cologne strength, so you're gonna have to douse yourself in them. But uh, Set Sail St. Bart's, I would go with that one. It's got kind of a uh, Virgin Island water feel, slightly. I mean, they're not one-on-one -on -one the same, but it's a similar kind of feel, you know, tropical boozy. And then Maritime, which is basically Tommy Bahama's take on Fierce. Uh, that'll take us to Abercrombie & Fitch, and with that one, Fierce. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. Mall fragrance of the century. Fierce. Kenzo, uh, fragrances that are not discontinued that you can still find. I'd go Aqua. Even though it says Aqua as the name, it's really not all that aquatic. It's actually uh, more of like, like slightly gourmandy and sweet. And it's a really nice scent. It gets overlooked because I, I think the name just doesn't jive with how it actually smells. Coach, probably Platinum. That'd be my choice. It's another blue type scent. Super versatile, daytime, nighttime, anytime. Lacoste, Loam Intense. It's actually a really good scent. Uh, the performance is nice. The price is nice. Packaging is pretty simple. Fragrance itself is well done. And it's got rhubarb, which is a note that I love that doesn't get used enough. Ralph Lauren, Ralph's Club. Got kind of a Y Eau de Parfum from Yves Saint Laurent vibe to it slightly. So it's basically Ralph Lauren's blue fragrance and it works. Burberry, I'd say Brit Rhythm Intense and London. I would say overall between the two, personally, I like the smell of London a little bit more. Reminds me of the holidays, spicy. Uh, it's got a port wine note to it, tobacco as well. Brit Rhythm though, uh, more versatile. Nautica, Voyage. Yeah, just Voyage, the original. It's a go-to cheap gym summer sports scent. It still works, smells good. Nice green apple note. Tommy Hilfiger, Impact Intense. That is great. If you haven't smelled that, check that one out. Kind of like in a dumbed down way to break it down also, but like a cheaper designer take on Parfum Smartly Laden, something like that. Davidoff, the original Cool Water. Yeah, I know it's kind of a boring choice, but there's a reason it still sells and still sells really well. Um, if you wanna go more modern, Cool Water Parfum, that's kind of like Davidoff's take on a Dior Sauvage type scent. So if you wanted to, you could go with that also. Mercedes Benz, gotta go Club Black. Vanilla through the roof. One of the better vanilla designers you can find. Ferrari, probably Bright Neroli. It's kind of like Neroli Portofino, only cheaper. Bentley, uh, maybe Black Edition. Yeah, that one's got a lot of versatility. Bentley for men, intense and absolute. I personally like more 
but as far as just versatility and compliments go, Black Edition, probably a little better. And we'll wrap it up with the Perry Ellis. And Perry Ellis, I gotta go with America, and it is kind of their take on Aventus. So once again, kind of like a Mont Blanc Explorer is Mont Blanc's take, America is Perry Ellis' take. So this was, this was really long, yeah. Ugh. Sorry that I couldn't give you guys too much information on each fragrance. If I did, this thing would have been like an hour long and that, that's, that's just too much. So we'll cut it there. Maybe I'll do a follow-up version on niche fragrances, indie fragrances, and other designer fragrances I didn't mention in a future video. But for now, thank you for hanging with me till the end. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.